We're live. We're not actually live. We're just recording. <laughs> so, Ryan Walsh, welcome to the show. Thanks, I am very happy to have you here. I, I, I've been seeing your name and Valkari, all, Valkari, is it Valkari? All over, everywhere. Like, and in really good ways. So I'm really, really happy to be able to sit down with you and just kind of talk a little bit. And I just want to start with saying congratulations on the Forbes article. Way to go there, badass. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a crazy year. A lot of things that have uh, happened and, you know, very unexpected, very surprising, but we're very grateful and thankful for all of them. I bet. And, and I'm, I mean, Based on, tell me a little, I mean, just tell me a little bit about you. I mean, I know you have a military background. Um, so do I. I'm just curious uh, to learn a little bit more. Like, and how, did it involve drones? And how'd you come up with this crazy, awesome idea? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, when I was 17, um, I graduated high school and we had just invaded Iraq. And it seemed like, uh, seemed a little bit more adventure than college. So I enlisted. Um, had my dad come in and enlist for me, you know, you had to have a parent signature at 17 and, um, I wanted to do that, that eighties action stuff. Right. So I was like, I want to be a ranger. And, you know, they said, good luck. You know, the chances of you making it are next to none, but I guess you can try. And I tried and I made it. So, um, I was overseas quite a bit and we were utilizing the most premier assets that the US military had. And so we were covered um, from a ISR and from a you know gunship point of view by drones, you know, quite often. And they started very much in a recon platform. And by the time I had gotten out, they had these full missile batteries and, and you name it, right? So um, I really saw the evolution of the technology. Um, and then I had gotten out and got my undergrad in, in economics and started a few small businesses. And I really understood the mechanisms of business. Um, the, the economics degree, I was really impacted by the trends, right? And seeing that military technology was always 20 years ahead of consumer technology and noticing where these repeated patterns were. Um, so we, we saw drones really starting to get more adoption around 2012, 2013. And Alex and I had sat down and said, where is the choke point in this, right? Where is the overlooked piece of it? And it goes back to that, you know, ranger training, right? When you're looking to take over a territory, right? I mean, you find the choke points, you find where there's unoccupied areas, right? And so we really analyzed the market in depth and we figured that the consumer interface and the, the mailbox and the landing station was really where the most opportunity was. I love that. And and I love that you applied the sort of the, the ranger mindset to that. It's definitely an innovator mindset for sure. And, you know, I was, you may not know this, but I was actually on, not a drone, but I was on one of those manned ISR assets for about three years in oh. Afghanistan um, with Task Force Odin. So that was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was, like I said, and, and that, that actually, there was a funny story on how I got into the drone industry. That'll be another time, but it started in Afghanistan. So uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm absolutely curious. So like this, this bottom up bottoms up approach that you're, you're taking this customer centric approach that you're taking, like, so tell me a little bit more about that. So a lot of the drone companies, um, they really took a, a top-down approach, right? Let's start with the drone technology, especially when drones, I mean, they, they've been tested on and off all the way since the 30s in some cases with, you know, delivery by um, mail helicopters in, in uh, the New York City in the military, right? Um, we didn't see that there was going to be a lot of fundamental game-changing uh, you know, patents and technology that could really be be captured in the, the drone side of it, um, you know? And so we figured there was going to be a ton of competition and that the drone companies were gonna have a big fight over incremental gains. And so we saw a lot of these initial companies come out 
focusing on the flight of the drone, making sure the drone could get from point A to point B, all of those things. And to go against those companies with limited resources would be nuts, right? But where they didn't focus was how they actually interact with the customer, right? You see Amazon's initial sizzle reel. It was this mother holding her daughter's hand in this well-groomed, perfectly manicured lawn with no pets, no balls, no kids on bikes, nothing, right? And this drone lands at, at ground level and you're hoping none of those interferences could happen, right? It didn't seem realistic. And so then you had companies working with tethers and while tethers are great, um, they still have some limitations, you know, and it doesn't secure the package on the ground. You still have to be present. You, you still have to take time away from what you're doing. And I don't know about you, but in Chicago in the winter, I don't want to be sitting in my driveway waiting for anything. Um, no so we, we said, how does a customer have the most seamless connection to this delivery means without actually interacting with the drone and, and doing anything unsafe? It makes a heck of a lot of sense. So, and just what's interesting. So I've spent my eight years in the drone industry focused on analytics and like the drones, just a fun little flying ham sandwich. Like I really don't care. Like if you can get me the right data, cool. So all everything that they can do, that's fantastic. Let them fight each other. That just works out for me. And if I could provide input on the data side of it, absolutely. So I see analytics as one piece, but drone delivery, man, it is taking off. And this sort of last inch solution that you're developing <laughs> makes so much sense. It's, mm -hmm. it's simple, but complex, and it solves a ridiculous amount of problems. You're right. And, and that's just, it's very interesting. So I love to see how it sort of came to be and just that, that simple, yet like I, I'm a big fan of keep it simple, stupid, right? The kiss method. Like if, if you can just subscribe to that, but a lot of the drone industry doesn't, like they don't, they're like, look, I got the greatest new widget. Nobody cares. Like nobody, no, nobody really cares. It's like, and they talk about precision and accuracy and distance and communications. And yes, this is all part of the ecosystem that we're building, but what problem is it actually solving? What does a one millimeter pixel do for you? What is a drone that can fly for 300 kilometers do for you? What is the solution that you're trying to solve? So, and there's not that many people that are focused on that. So it's a breath of fresh air when I'm talking to someone that actually talked about a solution to a real problem. And, it, and it's not just, you know, fluff. It's not fluff. It's a real problem. So I appreciate that. So thank you so much for, for doing that for sure. I, I'll, I'll shift just a little bit. I'm curious. Could, what can you tell me this partnership with Ag Eagle? Sure. Um, you know, Ag Eagle has been a phenomenal partner of ours. Um, we connected with them in the middle of last year and, you know, through mutual contacts, um, we realized there was a lot of alignment in the strategy wow. they were shifting towards and the strategy we were going after. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that they provide for us is our manufacturing. Um, and they're able to put out much better uh, production level uh, drone delivery stations than, you know, we put out really good prototypes and they're great, but they're still prototypes and we're making them in our uh, R&D facility, whereas they're tooled up for full production manufacturing. Um, so we're very happy about that. Uh, but we've also developed some code, uh, joint technology and co-development type solutions together. The first one being the golf course demonstration we did in Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we looked at a few different use cases and they all pretty much have the exact same technology, but they had high criticality and higher risk levels, right? You either had to fly longer distances over people, you know, any number of things that would add to the risk portfolio. Whereas, you know, the, the golf course provides a fun, low risk 
chance to demonstrate it, get it to a commercial viability point, and then take it into those other markets once it's been perfected, as opposed to starting immediately with organ transportation at a hospital, right? So doing it where it's beers and, you know, it's it's much lower risk. Um, and still the golfers at, at Sun City loved it. They were just amazed by the technology. Um, so we think this is a big first step in, in a much bigger partnership with Ag Eagle on a development point of view. That's good. And you're right. I mean, it's, it is a fun use case. I'm a golfer. I, I literally the same time, I don't know if you timed this, but like the, the same article came out with the, the, the drones being used to deliver the open drones, just delivering beer and food at Michael Jordan's golf course in South Florida. So I was like, wow, that's really cool. Why doesn't he have one of these or, 18 of these <laughs> like it seems it would make a lot of sense and you know i don't know they can <laughs> i just think it's a lot of fun instead of having to find the cart the the, the cart girl and or, or guy and then you know get your refreshment and just be lucky you can just app boom i need a beer boom i need a shot you know or whatever i need a sandwich <laughs> need some crackers and it just shows up like that's just that's just way too much fun, honestly. And and it's really interesting. Um, I like to think like a, a couple steps ahead, like while these drones are doing these fl is is doing the flying. Like, are there a possibility? Because I mean, I know you guys are waiting, you know, weight and balance, and you have to make sure that you are are you're using that effectively. I know you have some margin, but I'm curious. Like, have do you have sensors that could or any sort of camera system that you could possibly add on to do some remote sensing as well, sort of at the same time? It's funny you mentioned that, you know, Ag Eagle does come from agricultural background mm -hmm. where they, uh, you know, analyze farmers' crops and, and fields and different, you know, soil densities and things like that. Um, yeah, that is a, a part of our commercial development is over that same uh, flight, right? You have the, the same camera. You know, you put a different filter on, whatever it may be, so you're picking up all the different, you know, images you need. Uh, you can analyze the, the quality of the grass in the same time. So that's part of it. You, you definitely alluded to something we're working on. Nice. Uh, not trying to look into the future, but like that excites me. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's a two function. It's a multi-function tool. It's not just something that's going up to just take pictures or deliver something. It's doing both. <gasps> Ooh, <laughs> it just got very exciting for me. I, I like that as a data guy. So I think that's that's really kind of cool. So we'll stay tuned on that one for sure. So in the article, I thought this was very interesting in the Forbes article. I, I, Canada is number one. Europe is number two. U.S. is lagging far behind. Why? You know, um, that's also kind of just a part of where we are at the moment. Um, it seems between a lot of the Western countries, there's, um, you know, kind of this lockstep, right? You know, the Europe may release something and the U.S. may, you know, be six months behind, but then they release something a little more advanced. Um, Canada might release something even more advanced. Um, but that really comes down to the, the tolerance from the different regulators more than anything. Um, the FAA, you know, they, they put out some ambitious goals early on and I've always been a, a fan of their track record. I do think that, you know, they've kept us all safe through all kinds of air travel situations for man travel. So, you know, no fault against them. Um, but I do think that there's been some stalling when it comes to regulations in the US. Um, I also think that there's some over complications that are happening in the US. You know, we're trying to add all of these systems and all of these different pieces to it that, you know, whether it completely removes the hobbyists or, um, you know, limits the, the growth and, and all of these things. I mean, there shouldn't be a reason why you can't do beyond visual, especially in very remote or rural areas, right? I mean, the technology has more than proven itself at this point, um, but there's all these questions and concerns that haven't been addressed. And so um, we've seen, Canada specifically, you know, we have a number of Canadian partners and we recently expanded to Canada because it, it's moving so much faster, right? But you 
lay out a good case and they hear you out in a reasonable amount of time and then they send you to the next phase and you know they'll get you in touch with the different resources in the government that you need and it's a very collaborative effort and they seem to be moving uh, faster when it comes to new ideas, new use cases, um, just all around safely taking the steps required to get this mainstream. And the governments and municipalities in Canada are actively embracing, you know, saying we see the need for smart drone infrastructure. We see the need for how our cities need to adapt to the future and how logistics is going to change. Um, where we get a little bit more pushback in the US more than anything. I mean, you look at what MANA's doing in, in Ireland, right? And I mean, they're making daily deliveries all over, right? Um, Wing's doing that in the US, but it's, it's very localized and very, you know, limited. Right. I mean, we'd like to see after all this time, the, the progress expand and we see this offered in more areas, but it's always these tiny little pilots and huge companies that can realistically grow this stuff much bigger, much faster. But it seems like they're stymied a lot of the time. So it's just my personal experience where the market stands today. Um, the Canadian government seems to be much, much more um, open to adopting this and, and figuring out how to adopt it rather than cutting it off. Makes sense. So just following that right up, like, so what, what are some of the challenges and opportunities that you see here in 2021 and 2022 that Valkari specifically is going to have to overcome? And then if you want to expand that to what the industry is going to have to overcome to support what we're all trying to do. Sure. Sure. Uh, it's, I always use the example of where the industry's been, right? The industry really came 2014 to 2018, was focused on the drone, right? Can this drone fly? Does this technology actually work? And the business cases that opened around it were mining, inspection, things like that, that only required the drone, right? And then in 2019 and 2020, we really saw, um, the shift into UTM and communications for phase two, right? Everything was UTM. Everything was, you know, what are we doing for remote ID and this and that, right? And the companies that really took off during those times were heavily geared towards that. 2021 and 2022 are going to be the years of consolidation and integration, right? Now that we've proven these drones can fly, they can talk, Right now, what is the actual money maker for this? And delivery seems to be the go-to every time. Right, there's much more opportunity when it comes to last mile logistics than there is in mapping bridges. Right, um, you know, still a huge market, but just size-wise, it's night and day. Right, and so the things that are becoming important are now recharging landing stations, things that contribute to those business cases, and how do we actually implement these at scale. And so I think there's going to be consolidation in the market. There's going to be um, a lot of these individual technologies, because in the drone industry, you have you know great companies, but hyper-focused on one piece. And the companies that went after the whole pie early on, right? They didn't really make it because it's just too big for any one company, right? So yeah. we're going to see the drone manufacturers working with the drone providers and the safety systems and the autonomous systems and, um, you know, the route planning, the landing stations, the UTM. These are all going to get layered on top of each other in the next two years. And those will be demonstrated to the regulators and showing full safe systems that work all the time everything meets criteria, all the different factors have been accounted for and all the variables have been removed. And so I'm really excited to see where that goes over the next two years. Then we're going to see at the you know, 2020 to 2023 is when BVLOS, we, we expect that around the board, right? Once that happens, the systems are fully integrated, ready to go, you're going to see this thing just hockey stick and everybody, I mean, when it, when it comes to like Amazon getting into airplanes, right? They bought a lot of airplanes 
but airplanes are expensive. Could you imagine if that budget went towards fully proven out last mile logistics technology? They could scale this countrywide in months. Absolutely. Right? So we really see 2023 and beyond being the the big formative years for drone delivery. Like we haven't even crested that wave yet. Um, by 2027, it's going to be so reliable and so efficient that we're going to start looking at the passenger drones and the air taxis much, much more seriously, right? Because those will never come to play if we don't figure out the small ones and the cargo delivery first, right? If you can't, that. if you can't functionally do this with a 55 pound drone and a five pound payload, right? What makes you think you can do it with a multi-ton vehicle full of people, right? Yeah. So that's the timeline we're planning on. I think that sounds reasonable. No, and I highly appreciate all of your insights and where you believe this industry is going because I'm right there with you. I think we are we are preparing the hockey stick. It is not one of those technologies that is going to go away. It is only getting more rich and robust, smarter, it's more attracting more people. It's gaining more momentum and it's gaining more, which is really important and why we're even talking right now, more public acceptance. Like we want the we want the public who only see drones as annoying or scary as seeing the possibilities. Wow, it just delivered me something to my house or to a golf course or it changes the mindset a little yeah. bit. And every single time incremental gain that we make to do that is a win in my book. So uh, Ryan, I really appreciate your time today. This has been eye-opening for me. I I'm I'm very proud of what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. We're all heading in the same direction. I fully believe it. And I'm I'm excited to see where Valkari goes. And I I'm excited to, to start seeing this at golf courses that I play at. <laughs> and I think it'll be I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think so too. And I really appreciate you having me on. This has been a great opportunity. My pleasure. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and uh, thank everyone for listening. And we will uh, be back next week with another great innovator and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.